Hello, I'm Monty Beatham, and you're watching Once a Warrior. I am a massive fan of my guest uh, today because I tell you what, he always says the most important gift you can give anyone is your time because that is something you will never get back. With that being said, Sir Peter Leach, I really appreciate your time today, man. What happened to the mad butcher, Monty? Well, hello, the mad butcher. Well, the mad butcher, Sir Mad Butcher, because we want to say that, right? Because you've done so much in uh, the environment in this country of ours to be honoured with the, the, the Sir role. That was a big thing. Uh, uh, John Key talked me into it because yeah. I, I thought it wouldn't fit my image because, you know, I'm a bit of a rough diamond. <laughs> I, you know, drop the odd swear word now and again. And um, he said to me, you'd be the first butcher in the country to get knighted mm. and the first leaguey to get knighted. So that swayed me around, yeah. Well, you've got a few things in your time. Uh, the 19th Warrior, um, a jersey that's been um, retired because of you, yeah. Sir Peter Leach. I mean, that is huge. No, it's not happened to anyone else uh, in the club before. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you remember that moment? Oh, never forget it. Mainly, I got the ring. Yeah. I got the ring. If you play 100 games, you get the ring. The jersey I was embarrassed with because I couldn't say no because it was a big function and Mick Watson, our CEO at the time, you couldn't argue with him, you know. So um, I just feel... In all due respect to all the other players, I just feel that they should have retired for Stacey Jones, to be yeah. fair, you know. But uh, it's a nice it's a nice honour, and when I want a big note, I can bring it up. Like I, I said to one of the players today, do you realise I'm the 19th Vodafone Warrior? Yeah. yeah. You know, when I had business cards, it was on the back of the business card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in a suits potentially, but you, yeah. you're a good man. But OK, so years on from that moment when you are probably a little bit reluctant, um, yeah. how do you feel now when you look back on it and go, you know what, that's pretty cool because when you look at accomplishments when uh, you've come out of a career or come out of the club, even though you're still involved, uh, how, do you, how do you feel when you look back? I mean, your, your grandkids must be impressed. Oh, I don't know, mate, to be fair. Look, I've, I've had a great journey. I've, I've enjoyed every moment of it. The funny thing is, when the club was first started, the then chairman wasn't that keen on me, I don't think, because the then CEO, Ian Robson, told me that they weren't keen on me and he found out that I was very popular in society and, that, yeah. and people thought of rugby league, they thought of me, you know, and um, he wanted me and he just said, come on in. And so halfway through the season, I started to get involved in the club. The first game, I stood on the bank mm. and I cried. Yep. Now people say, why'd you cry? As a league fan, to see that many people sold out stadium, unbelievable. Unbelievable, you know. Leagues come a long way, a long way. When I first uh, met you as a four-year-old, 40 years ago, mate, I heard you before I saw you. Uh, a larger-than-life character. Um, uh, why is that? A caring character, but also large enough. Always loud, always about showtime, mate. Talk to me. It's just who I am. I think, you know, I left Wellington when I was about 17, 18 or something and come to Auckland. I left it with another guy called Colin Armstrong, and most people thought he w he would never go back, and I would be back within a week or so. Yeah, it was vice versa, and I think I was working in Crangapie Road in a butcher shop, three doors down from the Pink Pussycat. How dumb am I? I thought that was a pet shop. <laughs> I learnt very quickly it wasn't a pet shop, and um, one of the boys said to me one day he got smart, and we had a competition on breaking a side of beef down, mm. went in mm. early, and. He thought he was the best, you know. He, he, to be quite, quite blunt, he had to set up his ass, And I beat him hands down. Yeah. So that, that's where I started to gain confidence, because I never had a lot of confidence. And uh, by winning that, comp, that little race, it just gave me that edge. And I thought, well, if he thinks he's the best, yes. I must be the ultimate best, you know. And mm. from there, it, it just grew on me, mate. You know, I never, when I left home, uh, you know, my mum and dad were rolling in the grave to see what I've been up to, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, and my sister, my sister Dorothy hated the F word. Oh, with a vengeance. Oh, geez, geez. She used to say to me, oh, Peter, don't, you know, use that. And I'd done a gig for a charity one day and we raised about forty, fifty thousand yeah. $50,000. And they sent me a lovely letter. And in it, the lady said, and the crowd loved you saying, and she put the F word, you know. And uh, I took that letter back down to my sister and give it to a friend. Yeah. Mm. And then she started to warm to it. Not like it, but... Yeah. Know. How did the, the Mad Butcher name become official? When I opened my first shop in Rosella Road in Mangry, it was Rosella Meats. I started to have talk on radio. A guy called Tim Bickerstaff, he bagged 
Mangry East, and I rang him up, had a gamble with him, a little bet, and I didn't realise he's a professional gambler, and used to always have to pay the money in the Wirree Bar, Wirree Trust Hotel in the private bar. I'm sitting there one day, and we, we, we talked about doing some advertising. Yeah. We need to give it with that. A Māori mate walks past and says, there's the effing mad butcher. I said, that will do us. He said, no, no, we can't use that word. So it started off, Rosella meets the home of the mad butcher. Yeah. And then another guy that was very big in media in this day, Gordon Dryden, said to me one day, you really need to pick one or the other. And I just went for the mad butcher. And it, and it just took off, mate. Because, you know, I, can't, I am a bit mad. Like, yeah. uh, sometimes I say to people, I open my mouth before my brain sets in and I've only got a small brain, you know, yes. and I, I feel a bit embarrassed at times with what I've said. Um, but it took off, mate, and people used to come to see this idiot that would talk on the radio and make a dick of himself. They love you, Butch, they love you. If I had a dollar for every time someone told me of an experience they had in the Mad Butcher Lounge, I'd be like you, yeah, I'd be a millionaire. Yeah. Um, that's what you've been able to do for the fans. Uh, talk to me about why you've been that way, because you want to make it special for everyone. It's always about showtime. I, look, I, it's just me, mate. It's who I am. Like, I talk to everybody. I don't care if you're a gang member or mm. a vegetarian. I'll talk to you, you know, and I, that's what I do. And Because the lounge is me. I have a great mate, Dexter Trail. Yes. I have a guy called, uh, we call him Elvis, that does the music for me. Um, and I've got some helpers, you know. And uh, it's, 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 it's a team effort, like a game of rugby league. It's a team effort. I think my one of my... Um, attributes, that's a big word for me, is I build relationships. Yes. There's a group that come of pommy guys, and I nickname them the pommy bastards, yeah. all right? And they got waistcoats done with pommy bastards on, they got me one, and they are just fantastic. They will start out and sing, and then there's Dave and Lorraine that fly up from yeah. Christchurch every week, you know, wonderful people. and. I said to her the other day, she's over 80, I think, and I said, now, will you be up to, you know, go around with the donation tickets because we have a donation table, yep. you see? And uh, she said, of course I can. I said, oh, do you want any help? She said, of course I No, I don't need any help. I'm going to do it, you know. Just, yeah, there's so many, and it's hard to pick one or two, but so many good people. And the thing was, it's an adult entertainment lounge. Mm. If you don't like swearing, you don't come, you know. And if you don't like, you know, some of the things I do, don't come, they get warned. And my wife's always there. She sits in the other room. Like, my wife hates my humour. I don't, I don't know. Hate's not the right word. My wife doesn't yeah. enjoy my humour because yeah. she thinks I'm a real idiot at times. I, I love sharing the love. I think I got that off my father. My father would give you the shirt off his back. Oh, well. You know? And um, sorry, getting a bit emotional. And we, we weren't a rich family, but, you know, I remember. <laughs> this is a classic story. My wife will hate this. So we go down there after we just got married. And she, there was a clock or something on the wall. She said, oh, this is lovely. And my dad took it off the wall and give it to her. So every time they come up, we had to put the clock up. She hated the clock. She hated it. Oh, oh mate, classic yeah. story. Well, you, you mentioned, Janice, a wonderful part of your life. Um, and a at big times, part, a big a, part. Like a huge part, a yeah. wonderful lady. Yeah. lady. Um, but there's at times when she's felt for you because, you know, you've worked yourself so hard and you're out here doing stuff, volunteering for the Warriors yeah. and, you know, and at the expense of your health sometimes. Um, she, no, she has been fantastic, mate. There's no question about that. Particularly, Monty, you find out how your partner, how partner wife is when you get mm. ill. And I've had some illnesses, you know, and she's been a rock solid. Yeah. One of my biggest regrets is when I was the manager of the Kiwis in 2005. Well, that wasn't a regret. We beat Australia 24 nil in the final. But in 2006, she developed breast cancer. Yeah. And we had to fly her to Australia for treatment. I said to her, I'll give the manager's job away. No question. She said to me, no, 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 you keep doing it. She said, no, I'm all right. And I don't know why, but I kept doing it. You know, yeah. maybe ego, I don't know. And to this day, I regret it. She doesn't worry her. Doesn't, she never said anything to me. Yeah. You're a wonderful MC. I've seen you in there in the lounge. Um, who are some of the players that you've enjoyed talking to over the years or, uh, or interviewing? And some you give a hard time. I remember there as a young kid when I have heaps of hair on my head, I'd, I'd be a little bit worried coming in because I know uh, you put us on display in front of everyone. Well, that's part of the act. Yeah. They don't want boring interviews. They want entertaining interviews. You know what I mean? Uh, 
Gee, well, I've got to say Dr. Death, Jason oh, Death. Actually, he lived with you too. He lived with me. Lovely guy, though. Lovely guy. And we still stay in touch. Mm. We still stay in touch. He's a beautiful person, you know, and uh, he's an entertainer. Yeah. yeah. He had his own uh, group, Death Row or something. Yes, um, that's right. Yeah, he had his own fan club. And Kevin Campion stayed with me for a while. Yeah. Kevin, when the dishes come up, his phone would ring. <laughs> now, I think he used to send his wife a message, it's time to ring. But no, two lovely guys. But to be fair, so many of them. Look, mm. I don't think I've ever disliked a warrior, you know. Yeah. But then guys like, you know, like a guy like Matthew Rich, he was a really good dude, you know, like misunderstood by some people, but a really good dude, you know. Phil Blake, I still keep in touch with Phil Blake. Yeah. You know, text me or we ring each other. Yeah. Never underestimate what a good player Phil Blake was, you know. I mean, Logan Swan's another guy I keep in touch with. Logan would be one of the most professional players I can recall. I mean, you were good, but he was that little bit <laughs> up. Like, you know, he would take, he takes care of his body, you know, where yep. a lot of players don't realise you've got to take care of your body. You know, they might yeah, drink sure. too much or whatever. But straight afterwards, you'd, you know, do his little warm downs and that sort of thing. Mm. You just click with certain players. Yeah. They see what you're trying to do and they see what you're... You know, like I explained to some of the players that they took a lot of photos and I put them on my account, which is uh, Sir Peter Charles Leach. And I said, it's not my ego doing this. Mm. This is, I want to share the love with the fans. Mm. And if you were to go on there and see some of the comments, people say, oh, thank you for sharing the photos. You know, love it. Um, it's just sharing the love out there. Talk to me about Stacey Jones and why you bought the man 21 presents on his 21st birthday. We went to a hotel a restaurant in Parnell, it's now closed. And uh, there was me, the coach, John Money, yep. Ian Robson, Bob Lanigan, another good- Bobby Lanigan. Yep. And uh, to be fair, I was drinking in those days. And uh, I brought these, and Stacey didn't want to open them. And you know, I can be a bit bombastic at times. No, you gotta bloody open them, you know? Yeah. And he opened them, but he wasn't happy. <laughs> He wasn't happy. He got 21 presents and he wasn't happy. <laughs> he, it was him. He, because he's a modest guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he's, he's like you, Monty. He's like a lot of the plays. He's modest, you know. Um, yeah, and uh, it was a, a great night. It took two people to put me in a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you've, you've been on many a trip. Uh, you've been over as a manager. You've been over as a uh, super fan. I mean, for, for a, a moment then, you were paying your own way over, Sir Peter. Oh, yeah, for about two years I paid. It's my choice, my choice. Um, I paid my own fare and accommodation. And, uh, mate, I was grateful the club allowed me to do it. I mean, gee, mate, that's living in heaven, mate. But then I got bored of it. Because when you go away, what people don't realise, you, 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 we were away out on average three days. You just go to the hotel, you go to training, come back, you know. Who are the coaches you got on with, Butch? Most of them, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't get on... Were they, were they all different, the coaches? Oh, yeah, they're all different. But if you don't get on with the coach, yeah. you can't get around the team. Yeah. So you've got to... But look, it was, look, I never had any problem. I mean, Daniel and Anderson and me still keep in touch regularly. Love it. I ring Cappy every now and again. Mm. Ivan Cleary, uh, he mm. sent me a note the other day, loved me. Mm. Which was quite nice. Daniel Anderson said... The butcher knows when to joke, when not to, mm. when to shut up mm. and not to. That's you've got to know that. You know, you know, you take some people into the changing room and I've had to kick them because the coach is making us talk and they're trying to crack a joke. Yeah. You know, yeah. like this is just taboo, you know what I mean? And I look, make no bones, I've never played rugby league. Never played rugby. I I wrestled and done um, mm. softball, you know. To go in the changing shed or travel on the bus. You've got to know there's a protocol. On the bus coming to the stadium yesterday, I never said boo to anyone. Just yeah. sat there, you know? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's protocols, you know? You, you don't go down the back and try to joke with the players, yeah. you know? What about, what about some of the games uh, over, over the years, Butch? Was there any ones in particular? Obviously, you can't forget 1995 when uh, uh, you had those tears, got a little bit emotional, but uh, you know, you've been there for, for almost every game and even your record at home in the lounge has been huge. Any, any ones that stand out more than others? No, I've just enjoyed every game. Mm. But please, if you see me on the street, don't say, oh, Butch, they lost the game. Because <laughs> I couldn't care less. 
I mean, I believe it's only a game. No one died. And I mean that from the bottom yeah. of my heart. Because in the early days, I dealt with a lot of kids at Starship Hospital. And those kids were dying at five or six. And that taught me that, you know, really, mm. life is short, so you've got to enjoy it. And so I, I just enjoy every game. I mean, going to the grand final 2011, yes. taking the Prime Minister, Sir John Key, wasn't, I don't know if he was Sir John then, I don't sure. Um, but uh, taking the Prime Minister, John Key, to the grand final, I said to him, you've got to be seen at a league game because league people vote. You know, they yeah. do vote, John Key, they do vote. And I said, we're going to sit in the grandstand. And he was cool with that. They, NRL wanted to put him in a box, yeah. you know, and I had to tell them all to go and get, you know what? I said, He's, they had no idea, mate. And he sat there in the grandstand shaking hands and the players took him down the field and met the players after the game, mm. you know. And I think the players got a real kick to know the Prime Minister had come to watch them, you know. Butch, uh, you've been around the game for a very long time, especially the Warriors. Um, how, how much of rugby league do you know? I know nothing. What do you mean nothing? You can't be like no, no. nothing. Murray Deacon said on air one day, for those Murray Deacon's have his own shot. Yes. Yeah. Murray Deacon said one night, he said, the butcher knows nothing. And the guy got offended with him. Yeah. And the guy rang me to apologise. And I said, well, no, he's honest, mate. You see, when I got involved in rugby league, mm. that was my relief from my business. Because, mate, it wasn't easy building the business. No way. And I could go to a game, sit back and watch it, and, you know, and I don't know the rules. I know a forward pass. Yep. I know there's 13 players take the field, you know. Um, but yeah, it wasn't about, I just enjoy the game, I enjoy the mm. people. See, I'm a working class man, and rugby league was, back in those days, a working class game. Absolutely. You know, that you would you'd go to a club like Mangrish and you'd find hardly any businessman there. Yeah. Or businesswoman, you know. Um, yeah. Mm. How do you think uh, you're going to feel this weekend uh, when, you, when you watch them return after 1,038 days since they last played at home, Butch? To be honest, I won't have time to feel. Because the club have asked me, Cameron George, your CEO, has asked me to run the lounge, the Stacey Jones Lounge, the home of the Mad Butcher Club or the St Peter Leach Club. And um, I'm going to be flat out. My job is to make sure those 220 people in that lounge have a very good day, you know. And so I'm more or less uh, the next day I might feel it. But I, I know I'm excited. I can't sleep. I was up mm. at one o'clock this morning, you know, uh, just buzzing, you know. Went into town, hopped on the bus with the players yesterday. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, your favourite warrior and a lot of people's favourite warriors is Stacey Jones, the little general. Uh, but uh, he may be rivaled now, man, because I know uh, this week you've met uh, young Reese Walsh. Talk to me about that encounter of Reese because uh, I think he's got a spot in your heart there, Sir he's Peter. Got a, he's got a big spot. He's got a big spot. I, um, I didn't meet him at the hotel this, this Sunday morning. Um, but I met him at the stadium today and I said, oh, mate, I've always wanted to meet you. And uh, I said, my name's Peter Leach, the Mad Butcher. And he said, the Mad Butcher. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't run away. That was a good sign. And uh, he was just a, a really nice guy. And what impressed me, didn't have his head up his ass. Mm. Because quite frankly, with all the pats on the back he gets and all the kudos he gets, he could easy have his head up his backside. Yeah. But he hasn't. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I just like the way he loves his baby and, you know, yeah. and of course he can play rugby league. Yeah, he's got a, he sure can. I think he's gifted and he'll go a long way, you know. Do you think he'll stay at this club for, for a long period of time? I think that will be how, depend how his wife settles when they come to live here. Because I know that a lot of players loved it here, loved mm. it, but their wives didn't like it and that's why they left. Butch is 19th Warrior, um, seeing what the boys have had to sacrifice for the greater game, not just uh, the club. Uh, what, what's your feelings on them and, and what they've been through? I don't think a lot of people realise what they've been through. You know, it, it's been hard on them. I'm not going to mention a name, but I know one particular person involved in the club. The family didn't go over because the kids are at school. They didn't want to change the school because they didn't know how long they're going to be there. and they. They're going to be living in New Zealand. They're not going to be going to Australia. Um, and, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, it's been tough on them. And I, they have nothing but respect for me. And don't come to me and criticise because I don't want to hear it. You know, and I, these bloody know-alls that think they know everything and they know nothing, you know. You know, I, 
you know, being the manager and travelling overseas, I get to know a little bit about it, you know, missing kids' birthdays or whatever. I salute them all. I think we owe them a great thank you. Mm. And we need to show that on Saturday. And we need to, if there was a roof, we need to lift the roof off the stadium and cheer them on. Butch, 27 years on from that moment you were sitting on the bank uh, with those tears, did, did, did you think we may have had a, a bit more luck in terms of maybe winning a premiership? Well, I thought we were going to in 2011. Yeah. You know, I had a little slide bet on it, you know. Um, look, I just take it week by week. Uh, you know, I mean, it would be nice to win a premiership, but to be fair, I'm not too fussed because I've said, you know, I want to win one before I die. If we win one, I might bloody cark it. So, um, <laughs> you know, no, look, I just enjoy the game and the fellowship and the people. I mean, let's not forget, Monty, the fans. We have some beautiful fans. Mm. I hate being called the number one fan. I hate it. I don't mind being called the most well-known fan, but there are so many fans, you know, that unbelievable, mate. We're blessed. We are blessed, Monty. Sir, Peter Leach, once a warrior, always a warrior. Um, you've had relationships with the admin, with the players, with the fans, and uh, with everyone, really, and what you contributed to this club. Thank you so much uh, for all you've given. Thank you, Monty. And thank you for watching too. Join me next week for another episode of Once a Warrior. It's just a matter of faith, y'all. It's just a matter of faith, y'all. Oh.